Okay, so this morning we're delighted to begin with Lisa Jeffrey, who's going to tell us about SU2 representations of the fundamental group of a genus, genus two oriented two manifold. I'd like to begin by thanking the organizers for this invitation, although I am hardly an early career researcher, and more particularly thanking Peter and Jeremy for a splendidly well organized conference. You have really set a new standard for online conferences. You put the rest of us to shame. This material, I should say, has a lot of overlap with the talk I gave at the CMS Canadian Math Society special session on convexity in December. And some of you, in particular Jeremy, were in the audience. Uh, there will be some new material, in particular, the archive number of our paper is there. The paper was not written at the time of the CMS meeting. And some of the results even had not been proved. So there will be some new material. And some of the material will be saved for the breakout session, the material toward the end of the talk. So we'll go through everything in the outline. But some of the material, oh, some of the material here. Do you see the hand that I'm pointing with? Hello? Yeah, okay. yeah it's visible. Okay, okay, okay yes. good. So some of, some of this material will be for the breakout rooms. So let me begin. Sigma will be a compact two-dimensional orientable manifold genus two. In other words, a double torus. So first we puncture the surface, and then the fundamental group is the free group on four generators. And we consider representations of this fundamental group into SU2, for which the loop around the puncture is sent to minus the identity element, which is the center of SU2, the generator of the center of SU2. This space was well studied by DeSalle and Ramanan in 1976 paper and has been identified with the space of planes in the intersection of two quadrics in a Grassmannian. In particular, we define M, which is the pre-image of minus the identity element under the product of commutator map. And it's quotient by conjugation. So those spaces, This space was a special case of spaces studied by Atia Bott in their landmark paper on the Yang Mills equations on Riemann surfaces. Atia and Bott found for general genera, not just genus two, that these spaces were spaces of conjugacy classes of representations of the fundamental group were torsion free and they computed their Betty numbers. The ring structure of the cohomology, also for not just genus two, was identified by Michael Thaddeus. He used methods from mathematical physics and algebraic geometry. We are using, for the genus two case, simpler methods than Atiyah and Bott and Thaddeus. We're using the Meyer via Torres sequence to recover the results of Atiyah and Bott and also Thaddeus. Atiyah and Bott used Morse theory, Harder Nar Narasimhan, a lot of difficult machinery. We are, sh we are showing that in this simpler case, simple case, you can you can actually recover these results by simpler methods. So we, we sh identified the cell decomposition and ring structure of the space of commuting elements in SU2. This was previously identified by Adem and Cohen and a cell decomposition of the suspension of this space was studied by myself and Paul Selig in collaboration with Tom Baird. I should have said that this whole
project going back is joint work with Paul Selig and Nan Po Ho and Eugene Xia. Go on. So the cohomology groups of the level set of minus the identity element under the product of commutators map. And the cohomology ring of its quotient, but where you quotient out the subset of elements where at least one of the generators is sent to the, to the center of SU2. We have a new calculation of the cohomology ring of the space of conjugacy classes. The cohomology groups were identified by, Betty numbers were identified by Atia and Bott, and the cohomology ring was identified by Thaddeus in the general case. You, Thaddeus used the Ferlinda formula to obtain his results. Oops. And we identified the transition functions of principle, this principle SU2 bundle. That will maybe be saved for the breakout room. So the space of commuting elements is denoted by script T. The cohomology, the structure of the cohomology of this space as groups was discovered by Adem and Cohen. And as I said, the cohomology, the cell decomposition of the suspension was worked out by myself and Paul Selig and Tom Baird, also by Crabb. And we will denote SU2 by quaternions. So this notation refers to Z and W are complex numbers. Just if you see a complex number and it's supposed to be an SU2 matrix or a quaternion, this is, this is what we're referring to. Let me denote by T the maximal torus of SU2, which is this circle group. So for all, for all G, there is a theta for which G is equal to, G is conjugate to e to the i theta. We're taking theta from zero to pi. The elements where theta is from pi to two pi are reached using, using the Weil group. So this occurs if and only if the trace of G is equal to two cosine theta. Group SU2 is foliated by its conjugacy classes, which are parameterized by the values of this trace map. So G cross G is foliated by values of the trace of the commutator map. So we'll write this as, write these level sets as W theta. W theta just means that the commutator is conjugate to e to the i theta. And X theta means that the commutator is equal to e to the i theta. This notation will appear below. Oops. Let me also denote W of an interval, meaning the union of the level sets where theta runs from the closed interval A to B, and similarly for X. eckhart meinrankin showed that X theta is isomorphic to PSU2, SU, SO3. We'll denote this by script H. There is a homeomorphism from X theta to RP3, where the maximal torus acts on X theta by conjugation and on 
RP3 by left translation. We're able to write down an explicit T homeomorphism so that we can show that there's in fact a T equivariant homeomorphism from X data to RP3. So the space <coughs> the space of commuting ele elements commuting commuting pairs has I'll denote by x0 and there is in fact a deformation retraction from x0 pi to the space of commuting pairs we recall the following theorem, which is stated in Milner's Morse theory book. If f is a real valued function, smooth, and c is an isolated critical value of f, and f has no critical values in the interval between c and d, open, c, open, open at c endpoint and closed at the d endpoint, then f inverse of c is a deformation retract of F inverse of the closed interval. We apply this theorem to the trace function on X zero pi. The extreme value is the point where our theta is zero. In fact, instead of directly using Milner's theorem, we use the gradient flow for the trace function. We find that the flow lines for the vector field given by the gradient of the trace function are closed and every level, every point of X theta is the endpoint of a flow line that comes from X, U, X sub U for some U, from po some positive U. We can't get a closed form solution for the equations of the flow lines. We did find a different retraction, which is explicit. And this is what enables us to show that there is a, G, a T equivariant homeomorphism. So together with Tom Baird and Paul Selig, we Gave, we identified the cohomology of the suspension of the space of commuting pairs, showing that the suspension is equivalent to the suspension of this wedge product. In fact, SU2 cross SU2 is the space of space W zero pi. So these level sets. So as in the previous, previous slide, this is, homo is homotopy equivalent to the space of commuting pairs. And this one is homotopy equivalent to RP3. So, the intersection is in fact an open interval crossed with RP3 cross S2. By Meyer Viatoris, we're able to compute the cohomology of the space of commuting pairs as a ring. It turns out that all the cut products are zero. And we show that X zero is homotopy equivalent to this wedge product the wedge product that before we were saying that the suspensions were equivalent. This, some of this material is related to Trevor Bazet's PhD thesis. So M is the level set, define M as the level set of minus the identity element under 
the product of commutators. And this, this is a nine manifold. The space A, which is the contingency classes of M. is what we will mostly be talking about from now on. The center acts trivially, so we have a free action of SO3. So Atiyah and Bot found the Betty numbers. So they are Z when Z in even dimensions, zero, two, four, six, and there are, four, there are Z4 in 4Q equals three, the middle dimension. All the other groups are zero. So to recover this result, we look at A theta, which is as described, as described earlier, a zero and a pi are identified with x zero, the space of commuting pairs. So for theta between zero and pi, a theta is identified with RP three cross S two. We can write an explicit retraction for this. A closed zero, closed at zero and interval closed at zero and open at pi, this retracts to the space of commuting pairs. And A is then identified as this space in terms of the spaces of commuting pairs. And Meyer via Torres then gives the cohomology groups of A. So the nine manifold taking the level set mu inverse of minus i, we write, write that decompose this also according to the value of theta level sets of the commutator map. And the bundles, these bundles are trivial. So this tells you there is a local trivialization of M to A when you restrict to the subsets, these, these two subsets. And the transition function over the intersection A zero pi is given by basically the map that sends two elements to G, G, G H goes to G inverse H. This map is well defined because TX by left multiplication so that does that doesn't that doesn't apply that gets eliminated when you multiply, when you send GH to G inverse H. Let me talk about the pre-quantum line bundle. Uh, a is actually a symplectic manifold. It was Atia and Bot identified the symplectic structure on the space, on the space of representations of the fundamental group conjugacy classes of representation of the fundamental group. Bill Goldman also identified this symplectic structure. So that means that these, this is true for all genera, not just genus two. This means that it is equipped with a pre-quantum line bundle, meaning a line bundle equipped with a connection whose first, whose curvature is the symplectic form. 
So we, we will, in fact, study the not complex line bundle, but the prequantum U1 bundle. So that's a, that's a seven manifold. And we'll study its, its cohomology. This, get, this gets used as a tool to identify the cohomology ring of the space A. Possibly I should skip this and leave it for the, leave it for the breakout room. But let me fast forward to what we learn about. So we, we learn that the using again Meyer via Torres that the cohomology of the total space of the prequantum line bundle is Z in top and bottom degrees, and in the middle degree it is Z4. And everything else is zero. And from this, we are able to deduce the result known to Thaddeus that the ring structure is, so you have generators X in degree two, that's the, the Durham cohomology class of the symplectic form, Y in degree four, that's its Poincaré dual, and Z in degree six, that's really the fundamental class. And you have three generators denoted SJ in degree three. And the relations then are X squared equals four Y and XY, so that X, X squared equals four Y, that's a relation in degree four. The relations in degree six are that, well, that X and Y are Poincaré dual. So XY equals Z. And also, there are pairs of the S's that are equal to Z also. Some pair, the other pairs of the S's have product zero. That is to get this result about X squared equals four Y, use the use the Ferlinda formula. I should also identify there is a space A prime, which is defined as the space where you quotient out the, you quotient out the copies of S, copies of S3, you quotient out the degree three elements. Yeah, A prime, given here, you're, you're just quotienting out those generators. So if you, the cohomology of, cohomology ring of A prime is the same as the cohomology ring of A, provided that you get rid of all the things in degree three. You just eliminated the S's. So I'll talk about this in the breakout room. Let me just summarize, so I'm running out of time, what we know about the nine manifold. We will also write M prime denoted in the same, similarly to what I was calling A prime. We're quotienting out the, the, the things that get center, sent to the generator, that get sent to the center of the group. And the cohomology of M prime is Z in degrees zero and two, and this is also has Poincaré duality, so also seven and nine, and Z four in degrees four and six, and everything else is zero. we're also able to get the ring structure of M prime. But that again will be a topic for the breakout room. Let me 
finally just mention that our results are consistent with a 1966 paper of Wall, where Wall, dis Wall discusses, I mean, this is an example of Wall's theorem. Wall describes, is classifying six manifolds. Wall describes six manifolds where there is no, they're simply connected, so nothing in degrees one and five, and where there is something in degree three. And Wall proved that in this case, Y is the connected sum of some six manifold Y prime that has nothing where the cohomology has, there's no cohomology in degree three, and otherwise the cohomology is the same as what I described here. So for us, our, our six manifold A is consistent with this. You, you have A prime, which has no cohomology in degree three and connected some with two copies of S3 cross S3. And it's a, part of Wall's results are that there in fact does exist a smooth manifold that is homeomorphic to A prime. A prime as stated, looks like it wouldn't necessarily be a smooth manifold, but there is a smooth manifold that has this. Anyway, I will stop there and address some of the remaining questions in the breakout rooms. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, so yeah, let's all thank Lisa for the wonderful talk. Um, right, and I guess we're a couple minutes behind now because we started late. So um, yeah, we'll we'll save all the questions for the breakout room if that's okay, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, but it sounds like there's a lot to discuss. So, um, and if you're here, I guess we'll just go ahead and start setting up the next uh, 